Okay, here we are. Lesson 513. Ready to begin. I'm going to set the clock. 10 minutes. Over 15 minutes in a YouTube video. See if I get some of those positive ratings. Thank you very much. 5-29 is where we're going to start. Uh, 513 is about graphing reciprocal functions. So we're going to take a look at graphing uh, lines that we've been used to graphing. Mx plus b, quadratics, whatever. And then we're going to look at graphing their reciprocals, which will be a rational function. Uh, because you're going to take that function, you're going to flip it to the denominator, which means you're going to have a variable in the denominator. Number 29, sketch f of x equals x minus 3. Um, and y equals 1 over that. So the first step will be to graph uh, f of x equals x minus 3. Hopefully we can all do that. Uh, y equals x minus 3. So that's down 3, right? And then a slope of 1, that's up 1 over 1. So forth, that means the x-intercept's gonna be the same. So I would draw that sketch. Not really a brain buster there, okay? Again, we're working here on number 5-29 to start. Okay, so 5-29, sketch the graph of x minus three. I have that, that's a linear function. But the second part of that is the part that we're gonna really work on today. And that is, what is one over y? What does one over y look like? Well, you gotta, you gotta actually write that equation. So one over y would be one over x minus three. Well, we should know how to graph that. Okay, we talked briefly about it in class today. All right, but more importantly, uh, we should already know from algebra two. So one over x minus three tells us we're gonna have a hyperbola. That hyperbola has to have an h a and a v a. Those are the two things we sketch first. So right here, minus three in the denominator, that's a right shift of three. All right, and that's where our VA is going to be located. Hopefully, as I do that, and as you do that from home, you notice there's something special about where that VA is located in relationship to our original graph at the x-intercept. Second part there would be the HA. In this case, the HA doesn't move because there's no vertical shift. And then I would sketch my hyperbola. And again, sketch means better than a kindergartner, but uh, nobody wants you cutting off your ear and moving to the southeast of France. So there we have uh, y equals x minus 3 and y equals 1 over x minus 3. Now there's all sorts of things here that we're going to sort of incorporate that we had talked about uh, earlier in the chapter that we're going to continue to talk about here. We're going from a direct variation problem to an inverse variation problem. All right, you see here, as we leave the asymptote, as I leave the asymptote and my x gets bigger, what happens to my green line? It gets bigger, okay? Direct effect. Purple, as I leave the asymptote and my x is getting bigger, what's happening to my y? My y is getting smaller. And by small, we mean zero. Negatives aren't small. Zero is as small as you can be, okay? That's an inverse relationship, which is evidence from the uh, fractional function that we had at the beginning, okay? Number 5-30, sketch the graph of the function uh, f of x equals x squared minus 4. Now consider the graph of 1 over x squared minus 4. So we're going to repeat this process. Hey, everybody, there he is, Freddie Jones. Freddie Jones. That will be ready with an F. Hey, everybody from home, say hi to Freddie Jones. Freddie Jones, everybody, in the building. Come on, Freddie. Come in here and say hi. Here's my man, Freddie Jones. You gonna sing us a line or two? Yeah. Tell me about your big green tractor. It's good. No? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I gotta get back to teaching here, Freddie. You go ahead and get back to learning, I'm sure. Or walk in the halls. Seems like you do that pretty well. See you, Freddie. Yeah. There he was, people. That's Freddie Jones. The man, the myth, the legend. Okay, pack on task. See, even in a room by yourself, you can get interrupted. 5-30. 5-30 is asking us to sketch the graph of x squared minus 4. That's a parabola with a downshift of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Bam, vertex. Okay, if you forget how to sketch a parabola from out 2, let me give you the quick, all right, over 1, up 1 is your first point because 1 squared is 1. Over 2, up 4 because 2 squared is 4. Same on the other side because it's what we call an even function. Okay. And that will give us our parabola, x squared minus 4. Now, if we flip that, okay, again, right there, that was y equals x squared minus 4. If we flip that, then we have 
uh, y prime, we'll call it as 1 over x squared minus 4. First of all, let's take some hints from the original problem. Where are those VAs going to be located? This isn't as easy as an original hyperbola that we did in H2 because we have an x squared now instead of just an x. Okay, so what we're looking for here is to draw conclusions from that first problem. And that first conclusion is that at the x-intercepts, we're going to have what? We're going to have VAs. Okay, now we'll talk more about the conceptual reasons why that is. But for now, you need to know that anywhere there's an x-intercept, there's going to be a VA. Okay, and then from that point, we need to sketch uh, the remaining graph. Remember, it's a reciprocal graph. So if I'm taking the reciprocal, that means I'm flipping a fraction here, okay? And right there, that value is 4, negative 4. If I flip negative 4, what do I get? You're right, I get negative 1 fourth, okay? Now think about it. As I get closer to the asymptote, my green graph is getting closer to 0. If I flip that, it's not going to get close to 0 anymore. It's going to get close to a big number, which would be negative infinity. Okay, same thing over here. My green graph is getting closer to zero. Zero is small. If I flip small, I get big. Okay, so when I flip it, I'm going to get a big graph, which means it's going to go to negative infinity. Negative infinity is a big number. Same thing over here. This is direct. As I leave the asymptotes, as I leave the asymptote, when x gets bigger, y gets bigger. That means if I flip that, I'm going to end up with a hyperbola shape. If it's positive, it's going to stay positive. Why? Because you can't take a positive number and flip it to get a negative. Same thing over here. So you see that this graph has how many sections? Three. All right, how do I score this in the test? Because this is on the test. You get a point for each VA, and the VAs go where? On the x-intercepts. And then you get a point or two per section. Okay, so right there's a five-point problem. And again, we're reciprocating. If it's negative, it stays negative. If it's positive, it stays positive. If it was getting bigger, it's now going to get smaller. And by small, we mean zero. And big, we mean infinity. There you go, 5-30, graphing a reciprocal function. Uh, next, we have 5-31. The graph of cosine is on a resource page that I probably didn't give you, but you all know how to graph cosine. Right there it is. If you need time to sketch it, go ahead and push pause and take some of that time right now. Otherwise, you're going to take a look at the graph of cosine. Okay, right here is cosine. Okay, now we spent some time in chapter 4 learning about reciprocal trig functions. You were fooled in geometry when you were told that sine, cosine, tangent were the only ones you had to worry about. All right, so here we go. Y equals cosine. What is the reciprocal of cosine? Good answer, secant. So we're going to graph secant of x. What's secant of x going to have? Well, it's a reciprocal function. That means it's going to have VAs because it's going to be 1 over cosine. So everywhere we have an x-intercept, we have a VA. How many VAs are in this problem? All right. Now, some of you probably look at what I'm doing right now, and you answer that question, oh, Mr. Warner, there's two VAs. You're wrong. You're wrong, Stephen. There's not two VAs. Yeah, there might be on this section of my graph, but do I have the whole graph? No, I don't, because I know cosine goes on forever in both directions. So let's just say I extend the cosine here all the way to negative 2 pi. There you go, Mr. Warner. There we go. That adds two more VAs. So how many VAs is this graph going to have? Yeah, that's right. One million. Okay. So uh, I have my VAs. Now I need to reciprocate my graphs. Okay, or my sections of graph. So right here, that value is what? It is 1. What's the reciprocal 1? Good answer, 1. So that's going to be uh, an intersection point there. Now, my blue graph is getting closer to what value? 0. As I get closer to the asymptote, it's getting closer to 0. If I flip that, it's not going to get close to 0 anymore. It's going to get close to infinity. Same thing over here. Okay, now the nice thing about secant is it's going to repeat itself just like cosine. So over here, as my blue graph goes to zero, my orange graph goes to infinity. Down here, what's the reciprocal of negative one? You're right, negative one. My blue graph is getting closer to what? It's getting closer to zero. That means my orange graph has to go to infinity because I'm flipping it. Same thing over here. The nice thing about secant is it repeats itself just like cosine and sine. 
There's your graph of secant of x in orange. Now, what is the domain of that graph? What are all the possible x values? Well, any x value works except for the x-intercepts of cosine. So except for, oh, there's the timer. Our 10 minutes is up. You're going to want to go ahead and stop. Okay, and go ahead and view uh, 513 part B.